Hello, options traders. Welcome, everyone. I wanted to post a video here on ratio spread break-evens based on a question that somebody asked and was doing a uh, type of a strategy that's actually called a back spread. But these principles apply really to any strategy anytime you're using unequal proportions. And they cause problems for a lot of new traders because they'll take a look at the profit and loss diagram and they assume that the calculations must be the same as for traditional long calls and puts because it looks the same, but they don't realize that they're dealing with different deltas. And that's what causes the problems. So let's take a look at the considerations you need to take into account and some of the calculations for doing ratio spread break-evens. First of all, what are break-even points? Well, every option strategy has at least one break-even point. Some more advanced ones will have multiples, two or three break-evens, but you gotta have at least one. And that is the required stock price at expiration to break even on the trade. In other words, you didn't make money, you didn't lose. Now, technically there are an infinite number of break-even points. You've got one for today, one for next week, and so on. Every moment in time, there is a stock price where you need for that strategy to break even. But generally when people talk about a strategy's break even points, they mean at expiration. So those are kind of the limits there at expiration. So that's what I'm going to use for this video. Normally these are easy to figure out since you're dealing with deltas of either 1.0, such as long shares of stock, or let's say call options or short puts, or you're dealing with negative deltas, such as short shares of stock or put options or short calls, but it's always a delta of one. And so when new traders see their calculations for various strategies, they just assume that this is always the case for all calculations. Well, with ratioed strategies, in other words, where you have unequal numbers of calls and puts or shares of stock and options, it's not that easy. And you have to understand that before you realize why your break-even points are going to look a little strange. So for example, let's take a look at what I mean by the deltas. Here is a profit and loss diagram for long shares of stock. So what you're looking at here are various stock prices across the horizontal. And then on the vertical, we have various profits and losses. So here we have a profit and loss diagram for shares of stock purchased for $100 per share. So you can see that the green line crosses zero right here at 100. In other words, if you paid 100 for the stock and sold it for 100, you just broke even. But take a look at what happens if the stock rises $1 to 101. We trace a line up from 101 to where it touches our profit and loss diagram, and we make a dollar. No surprises there. Stock rises a dollar, you make a dollar. What happens if the stock goes up two bucks to 102? Trace a line up to the green line, right where it touches, look left, we make $2. So what this shows is that with long shares of stock, you always make dollar for dollar. And the same would be true if it falls. If the stock falls to 98, you would lose $2. But you're always earning and losing at the rate of dollar for dollar. The same would also be true if we did short shares of stock. It would be the same principle, but the line would just be leaning to the left instead of to the right. But it doesn't matter if you're short shares of stock or you're long shares of stock, you are always gaining and losing at the rate of dollar for dollar. But notice what happens if we buy 200 shares of stock. Now we move from the green line to the red. I have more deltas, I've got a steeper slope, and that's what causes these break-even points to get out of line. So if the stock rises to 101 now, I don't make a dollar. Go up to the red line and I make two dollars. And that's because I have 200 shares of stock. If the stock rises to 102, I don't just make two points like I did with 100 shares. I look up to the red line, I make four points. And that's because I have 200 deltas. The position is twice as big, so to speak, as with 100 shares. So that's going to throw those calculations. Well, this becomes particularly important when you're dealing with ratio spreads. And there's a lot of different ways we can get various ratios, but it's anytime you have an unequal number of contracts. And the strategy that this person was speaking of in particular is called a backspread. 
And a backspread is where you're going to sell a certain number of, let's say, lower strike calls. That's what he was looking at. But you'll buy a greater number of contracts at a higher strike. So for instance, let's say you're going to sell three $100 calls, but you're going to buy five 105 calls. Notice how we're not dealing in a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm not selling one call and buying one or selling two and buying two. They're unequal. They're in a what's called a ratio spread. And let's also say that we got this done or executed for a net credit of $3. So in this case, it's one spread because I can't break that three by five ratio down anymore. If I sold six and bought 10 for a net credit of three, that means I really did two spreads. I did two three by five spreads and my total credit would therefore be six, net credit of three per spread. So in this example, I'm going to assume we just did one ratio spread of a three by five. So notice that I'm not dealing with 100 deltas in both of these cases here. I've got different ratios. So what is this going to look like on my profit and loss diagram? Well, if we did this strategy right here, our profit and loss diagram would look like this. So what are the break-evens? So our break-even points are right here, wherever the strategy crosses zero, and we have two break-even points. So this is where most new traders make their mistakes. They will say, we got this executed for a net credit of three. You can see right here where we're crossing. So we start with a net credit of $3 and our first bend in the profit and loss diagram is going to be our short $100 call. So the mistake they make is they say, oh, I know how to calculate these break-evens. If I sell the 100 call for three, this break-even right here must be 103 because I'm effectively short 100 shares and I can kind of eat through $3 worth of credit. We're not. We are short three calls. Remember, we can't break this down any further. So this is really minus 300 deltas on this side. So what that means is in order to eat through this $3 credit, I'm doing that across 300 deltas. So my line is actually much steeper than it might really appear visually. I only need it to move $1. So from 100 strike up $1, is going to be 101 will be this break even. And we can see that's right where it's crossing is at 101. It's not crossing at 103 like most people would think. What's this number down here? Well, I have a $5 difference in strikes. I'm short the $100 call, I'm long the 105. But that's on three contracts. So that's 15 points of a potential loss. But I started with a $3 credit. So my total loss down here should be 12. And look at where we're lining up over here, right at minus 12. But now we got to calculate this break even right here. What's that going to be? Again, most people would say, well, if you're long the 105 call down here and you need to make up these 12 points, you need the stock to go to 117 at expiration. That's not true. We don't have 100 deltas over here. How many do we have? Well, think about it logically. We sold three contracts here. If I bought three of the 105 calls, I would just flatten out because I'm short three and long three. It would be a bear spread. But I've got an extra two contracts. I sold three and bought five. So that means I've actually kind of shifted this leg up by 200 deltas. I've got a net contract exposure of 200 deltas on this side. So the 12 points I'm trying to make up over here, I'm doing it across 200 deltas. So I only need the stock to rise six points on top of my 105 strike to 111. So this break even right here is 111. And that's right where it's crossing, right between 110 and 112. So it's quite different from what most people would expect. And again, the reason they make the mistake is they just look at these lines right here and they say, well, that looks like a delta of negative one. And this looks like a delta of positive one. There's really no reference points. And so they're off in their calculations. And that can sometimes lead to good surprises and other times it can lead to bad surprises. So you need to understand whenever you're dealing with ratios, your break-even points are going to be, in some cases, quite different from what they might appear. Here's another case where it can happen with a strategy called a straddle. That's where you're going to buy a call and a put with the same strike and expiration. 
Let's say you buy the $100 call and a $100 put, and you spend a total of eight. What are the break-even points? Most people know how to figure this one out. This is what the resulting strategy looks like. And so if my bend right there is occurring at the strikes, which are equal at 100, and I paid $8 for this spread, then on this leg over here, because I'm in equal proportions, one call, one put, I need the stock to rise $8. So $8 on top of my 100 strike, right there would be 108. And that's right where we're crossing. What about down here? I need the stock price to fall eight points. So right there would be 92. So again, this, the reason this is easy to figure out is that we're dealing in equal contracts. One call, one put, or five calls, five puts. Calculations will be the same. But there are different ways we can create a straddle. So for instance, let's say that you buy 50 shares of stock and you buy a $100 put. I'm gonna keep the price still at $8 total. What are the break-even points now? Well, let's take a look at the profit and loss diagram. Looks just like the previous one. And again, most people would say, well, take the $100 strike, add eight and subtract eight. And you can see you're not going to be close. Why? Even though that's our $100 put right there, notice that I've got only 50 shares or 50 deltas on the upside. So of the $8 that I've spent down here, I need to make that up over 50 shares or 50 deltas. So that's a delta of a half. So I'm going to take eight divided by a half, and that's 16 points. So I need the stock to rise 16 points over my current 100 strike here. So this upper break even is going to be 116. So again, if that's a little hard to understand, think about this. If you own 50 shares of stock and you wanted to make an $8 profit, how far does the stock need to go? It needs to rise to 116. Well, that's all that's happening here because we don't have 100 deltas to the upside. Now, what about to the downside? Well, I've got 50 deltas here, but a put option controls 100 shares. So the first 50 shares on my put would just be flattening me out. But because my put controls really negative 100 deltas, I'm actually up here at minus 50. So again, I need to make up the eight points across 50 deltas or 16 points. So this point down here is actually going to be 84, considerably bigger than the 92 and 108 break evens we saw on the previous slide. So again, it's easy to fall into these traps because if you just look at this, it looks like a regular straddle. And you'd be led to think that the break evens must be 92 and 108. But if we overlay the previous straddle with this one, very easy to see what's happening here. So because we only have 50 deltas on that second strategy, there in blue, you can see that the deltas aren't as steep as they are in red. And that's why we need the stock to either rise more or fall further before breaking even. All right, here's one final one for you to try. Let's say we're going to use a ratioed straddle. You're going to buy 25 shares of stock but you're going to buy the $100 put and I'm going to keep the price at eight just to keep the consistency here. What are the break-even points now? You can't add and subtract eight like you would normally. What's happening? Well, here's your profit and loss diagram. And I get my bend right here at 100 because that's the strike that we're using. That's my $100 put. But on the upside, I've only got 25 shares or let's say a quarter of a contract. I said the total price was $8. So I need to make up $8, but on a quarter of a contract. So that's actually going to be 32 points I need that stock to rise. So again, think of it as if you had 25 shares of stock and wanted to make an $8 gain. You would need the stock price to rise 32 points. So I'm going to add 32 points on my 100 strike, and my upper break even is going to be 132. What about to the downside? Here's where things get tricky. I've got 25 deltas on the upside, so the first 25 deltas on my put would just be flattening me out. But my put controls 100 deltas, technically minus 100. So how many additional deltas do I have here? 
I've got 75 on the downside. And that's why this line is much steeper on the downside than on the upside. So the $8 that I'm trying to make up have to be done across three quarters of a contract. And so that's going to come up to $10.66 I need for that stock price to fall. Not just eight like I would if it was just one full contract. I've only got 75 deltas. So I need the stock price to fall $10.66. And so that's going to give me 89.33 down here. And yes, you can get some very strange break-evens when you're dealing with ratio spreads, and that's why. So you've got a lower break-even of 89.33 and an upper of 132. So I hope this helps you to understand why there can certainly be cases where you might be looking at a strategy and you think you should be able to figure out what the break-evens are, but your broker's platform is showing something quite different. And in those cases, it's most likely because you have a ratioed strategy. So just kind of keep those points in mind and it will remove some of the mysteries. For those who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.